Good evening and welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and today's date is Tuesday, April 30th, 2013. And here's a look at some of our top stories. Tonight, the Government Accountability Office is now investigating the large ammo purchases made by the DHS. Meanwhile, the backlog on gun orders hits two million. Then, video footage from the scene of the shootout with the alleged Boston bombers appears to contain audio of the suspects screaming out, we didn't do it, as police fire on the two brothers. Plus, a video of a verbal clash between a foul-mouthed Boston resident and InfoWars reporter Dan Badandi goes viral and even mainstream. That's because you're a dope. And what you say is dangerous, and people like you shouldn't be able to drive a car, much less espouse your opinions in public. Rob Dew confronts the man behind the camera up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Just a quick reminder, if you're watching this live at 7 p.m. Central, you have about seven hours to get your uh, Paul Revere InfoWars uh, contest, video contest entry in by midnight Pacific time. So be sure you get that in. You don't want to miss out, especially if you've been working very hard on it. There it is, InfoWars launches Operation Paul Revere. Look at those rules just before you send it in. Remember, you've got to have it in two places. So, and then you send your email to paulrevere at infowars.com. So, don't miss out. If uh, there's been a lot of entries pouring in, this is going to be a lot of fun to go through. But now we're going to go to the news. First story, Boston bombers during shootout. We didn't do it. Audio feeds suspicious suspicions brothers may have been set up. This is from Paul Joseph Watson. Although by no means clear, the words appear to be shouted by the suspects as they come under police gunfire. And we are going to go to that video right now. Uh, it's been enhanced, and you can actually hear uh, what they're saying. It's got subtitles, so here it is. Wow, there you go. Chill out, chill out. We didn't do it. We didn't do it. Hey, officer. So... That just adds more confusion to the story. Um, a Facebook post attributed to Dakar Zarnoff, although not authenticated, reads, this will be the last message before police get me. I've never done it. They set me up. Father, please forgive me. I'm sorry. It's come to this. His mother, uh, Zubaded, was saying her sons are innocent, telling it's all lies and hypocrisy. And remember, she was the first person to come out and say, hey, these guys are being investigated by the FBI. The FBI interviewed me. And it turns out, well, they had the mother and the older son, Tamerlan, on terrorist watch lists. Uh, the Russian government was asking the U.S. government to investigate Tamerlan because he was going to Russia under an assumed name, which you can't do unless you're in some sort of, you know, you have some sort of street cred in the spy agencies. And uh, we're going to have a very interesting interview with a man who doesn't like anybody asking questions other than what's on the official story script. But before we get to that interview, which will be... Coming up later down, uh, down the line, we got a, uh, a special report from Dan Badandi, who was on the scene the day the bombings happened. He was interviewing people, and here is that video. This is Dan Badandi reporting for the InfoWars Nightly News. We're live here in Boston, Massachusetts, which just two hours ago, two bombs went off at the end of the finish line at the Boston Marathon. Right behind me is giant tents, medical tents, uh, were set up to help the runners, but they are now being used as hospitals. I counted about 86 ambulances on my way over here. Also seen a number of bomb sniffing dogs, military and police with fully automatic weapons. I mean, we've got all kinds of government agencies here, local agencies, and so on. And again, behind I mean, they're still working on people, and it's been over two hours since the incident took place. We were standing in the family and friends um, area, and I don't know, we heard one bomb go off, and everyone kind of went quiet. And then we heard the next one, and it was just thousands of people just silent. We saw one bomb go off. We both saw yeah. the finish line, and then we saw another one go off 50 or 100 yards. And, and we were the next 50 yards. And well, I mean, it was loud and thunderous. Uh... It made us, my back still hurts. Shake it oh, back. Wow. I mean, so we were 100 yards away, but we saw everything yeah. being as tall as the building. Everyone just rush, run, pandemonium. And I didn't realize at the time, of course, like everyone else, how, how bad the situation was. We didn't know for sure what it was. We just heard the noise and we looked at each other. We were together, thankfully. Um, and it didn't seem like immediately there was any 
sense of urgency. The people on the bullhorns were still directing people to come out of the area just like they were five minutes prior. Um, so we, we just had a feeling, and so we kind of went the opposite direction of the noises. We're, it was a herd of people, and then we just were standing there. Um, we didn't know what was going on, and then somebody said, you know, that people who had the cell phones were starting to saying there was a bomb, and then the rumors started, you know, there's bodies flying all over the place and, and things and like that. We heard, we turned around, and we saw, we saw bomb. everything, yes. Well, I made it back to my car safely, and I had to get out of that hotel right away, because right after that press conference, after I asked the governor and the FBI if this is another stage false flag, then I made my question point blunt. Again, why were warnings given to remain calm before the bombs went off? And a spokesman jumped on stage right away, all those press conferences over. I got to look at death, not only from the governor, but the FBI, the ATF, and all the other federal alphabet agencies that were there. So I ran out of there because uh, I don't know what was going to happen. But I ran out of there, and I got snarled at by mainstream media, of course. Uh, you know, another conspiracy theorist, you know, even though they were doing drills for the very same thing today. And, you know, if the thing is choking. If they were doing drills and looking for bombs... Why didn't they find the bombs, especially at the um, the Boston Marathon finish line? You know, when the, um, the bomb sniffing dogs were right there at the finish line the whole day. You know, and they were doing drills that day. Why didn't the dog sent that? Why didn't they pick that up? That's the question you want to ask. You know, you can call me conspiracy theorist, whatever, but I smell false flag written all over this. Yes, that's a false flag, gentlemen. This is Dan Badanti reporting for the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, uh, I tell you, Dan's got a lot of courage. He went to three different press conferences. He stood up. He asked his questions. It didn't bother him that the mainstream media was telling him, sit down, shut up, don't ask questions. That's not on the script we got here. You know, he just asked his questions. Going back to this article from Paul Joseph Watson, Boston Bombers during shootout, we didn't do it. Um, uh, it talks about Tamerlan saying that the, you know, he's, they're being investigated. His mom was saying they're being investigated by the FBI. His aunt claims the footage of, of the naked man being um, arrested was her nephew. Um, eyewitnesses are saying that the police ran over Tamerlan, not, not his brother, as they were saying. And uh, despite the FBI showing the images of only two boys with black backpacks, one of which was actually gray, there's numerous pictures of other people with black backpacks. And on top of this, there's the FBI investigations, there's the uh, Russian government asking us to investigate the guy. There's the CIA connections, all this stuff. There's bodies appearing in rivers, but we're not supposed to ask any questions other than how are the victims. That's the only thing we're allowed to ask, and that's, I guess, according to our next guest. And uh, he, our, our guest coming up, it's going to be after the segment that I'm going to do with Jakari. You actually recorded the interview earlier, and uh, let me tell you, you guys definitely got some issues. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. 